Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today on another episode of The EV Show. I'm your host, Michael Bream. Today we're gonna dive a little bit more into a technical subject. We're gonna talk about the TBS battery monitor. And uh, basically it's a state of charge meter. It's gonna tell us how much percentage we have left in our battery. So you can tell it's a very important device. And we wanna go through a quick setup guide for you guys. We get a lot of questions on this for our DIY installers. We wanna make sure you have all the information to get this programmed and set up and working properly right away. Let's get into it. So it's a pretty simple device. We have the device here, the, the dash display, and we have it installed over here in our thing. And it really only has one other component, which is a shunt. And so you're gonna install the shunt in your contactor box, and you're gonna install this up front. Because this is a higher voltage system, it's 150 volts, we use a five to one prescaler. And what this does is it divides the voltage by five. So in the back of your car where you're at 140, 150 volts, it's gonna break that down to about 20 some odd volts and send that to your dash. What we like about this is now you only have about 20 volts going into the dash of the car as opposed to over 100 volts of pack voltage. So we use the five to one prescaler and we do recommend installing this in the contactor box. Now, if you read the instructions, they do say mount it as close as possible to the gauge, but that puts us at odds again with putting high voltage in the dash. So what we recommend is install this in your contactor box. You might get a slight difference of about a half volt to a volt in actual voltage to the pack because a little bit of line resistance to the front of the car can cause that. So just be aware of that. And one of the first things that you do when you're done installing this is we want you to check your pack voltage and compare it against what the meter says. And they should be within a volt or two. If they're greater than that, there is a trim pot located inside of the five to one prescaler and you can adjust it for more accuracy. Speaking of inside the prescaler, there is a small fuse in here too. So if you have a little accident installing this and you can't get the meter to light up, chances are it's just a fuse inside of your prescaler and we sell those, we sell the replacement fuse in our store so you can pick them up there. So another option that we sell for this is actually the optional accessory kit. And what this does, it's called the alarm output expander. And there's one internal relay that you can use to turn on and off devices. For example, if the voltage gets too high, we can use that relay to turn off our charger. If you want other alarms, maybe an alarm that gives you a, your state of charge is below 20% or the voltage is below a certain threshold, this accessory here can give us that and it provides with four different outputs. So you can have a light, a buzzer, maybe turn off the charger. You can kind of control this stuff independently and you can get really creative with this. So we, we really like this uh, option. We don't put them in all of them because the stock functionality does have an internal relay. This just expands that to four. Okay guys, while we have this out of the dash, I wanna show you a little detail that is important. The connector on the back is a screw terminal and we wanna make sure to remind you that we do recommend that you tin the wire with solder before you put it in here and make sure to trim the conductive part down to an eighth inch. If it's any longer than that, you do run a risk of a short circuit on the back side of this connector. All right, so here's our device and thankfully we've already got it installed in the thing. Let's just jump in the car and we'll go through setup. All right, so before we can trust the data coming out our state of charge meter, we gotta tell it what size battery pack we have um, and what voltage levels we consider high and low and basically pre-program all of that into the unit to get good information out of it. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the programming mode. We're gonna put it into programming mode by pressing and holding the menu button for two seconds. And then it gives us a statistical display. We go past the history and we go into function and press the menu button. And of course you can follow along with the directions that are included. So in our system properties menu, there's gonna be five groups um, that we're gonna go through. There's actually a sixth one too, um, with some small settings that we're gonna to touch on. But the first thing we're gonna do when we install this is we wanna go and tell the device that we do have a five to one prescaler, and we wanna tell it what size shunt that we put in it. This is crucial for the current information and the voltage information that we're gonna get later on. So if we go to our little guide here, we're gonna look up what we're looking for is actually the shunt amp rating, which is right here, it's value 6.1. And then we also wanna tell it that we're doing a prescaler, which is 6.5. So we're gonna go in here real quick 
and we're going to go to 6.1 and we're going to change that to in our case we're using a 1000 amp shunt we use a bigger shunt than came with the system because this particular thing has a twin motor system so it can run up to 1300 amps keep in mind the shunt calibration value is not a maximum rating it's just a calibration value so you can run if you have a 600 amp shunt you could run say a hyper 9 system through it at 750 amps and you'd be fine what it's telling you is at 600 amps you're going to have a 50 millivolt difference voltage drop across the shunt so it uses Ohm's law to calculate the current and count the amp hours. So it's just important to note that it is a calibration value and not a maximum rating. Okay, diving right into it, we've set our value for 1,000 amps, and we're gonna press the menu button, go back out and select option 6.5, and we're gonna select the one to five prescale setting, and that will divide our voltage and give us the proper voltage. It's reading 119.5 volts right now. So we can start at the very top and go into programming, starting it with option one. So we're just gonna jump right into it now. We're gonna start with system properties 1.0. 1.0 wants to know the charger's float voltage. On a non-lead acid based charger, this is basically the maximum voltage that we're ever gonna see out of the charger. So what you wanna do is you wanna charge your car, let it go through a complete charge cycle and monitor the top voltage that it hits lower that by about a half and that will give you your float voltage in other words it's asking you at what voltage is your charger going to kind of top out at and go just below that what we're trying to do is we're trying to set two set of circumstances we want to make sure that the current coming from the charger is below a threshold and the voltage is above a threshold by satisfying those two conditions we can tell the battery monitor that our battery is in fact fully charged at 100 percent so in this particular case, we've got 30 batteries in series, so we charge to 126 volts. So typically, in a system like this, we would set our float voltage to just a volt below that. So we're usually around, oh, call it 125, 124 and a half. And so in this case, we've set our float voltage to 125. Okay, so now that we've got the charger's float voltage set, we're gonna set the charger's float current. This is a little tough and there's a little calculation to do and you need to know the capacity of your battery pack first. So once you find out the capacity of your pack, in this case, we've got, we're using the Tesla module, so we have 200 amp hours. We're gonna reduce that by 10% for a safety margin. So we're gonna use 180 amp hours. They wanna know our float current, which is about six amps. So when you fall below six amps, we're gonna consider our battery fully charged and we're gonna synchronize that to our state of charge meter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use six amps as our value and we're gonna factor that as a percentage of our overall amp hour capacity. In this case, six amps is roughly 3.3% of 180 amp hours. So that's the value that we're gonna enter for our charge current. We're actually gonna enter our float current to be 3.3%. So now we have our two conditions. If the battery is above 125 volts and the current from the charger is below six amps, for all intents and purposes, our battery is now fully charged and the charger will shut off shortly after reaching that six amp level. So now our state of charge meter can synchronize and it can actually be completely in sync with the battery pack knowing that it's 100% state of charge and it will start counting the amp hours down from there as you drive your vehicle. Okay, now that we've got the two most important things in there, we're gonna set some conditions. And one of them is for how long these conditions persist. It doesn't need to be very long. We typically set it for close to the minimum. I believe 15 seconds is one of the settings that we use on something like that. So we're gonna go in here and set that for 15 seconds. And now when our current goes below six amps and our voltage goes above 125 volts, our state of charge meter now knows that our battery is 100% charged and they synchronize so that they are the same. All right, so getting into some of the other items here, we're gonna move on to item 1.3. This is our discharge floor. And this is basically saying at what percentage do you consider the battery low or close to dead? And for us with lithium, that's 10%. So we're gonna enter for 1.3, we're gonna enter 10%. That's our discharge floor. Uh, we're going to ignore some of the battery temperature stuff. We're going to let our battery monitoring system actually take care of the temperature. So we're going to skip that here. We're just not going to set it. And then you've got an averaging filter and a sensitivity filter. Don't touch these unless you have a problem synchronizing 
in the first two steps. If you don't have a problem synchronizing, there's no need to change the default settings for your time remaining averaging filter and your sensitivity. Okay, moving on to setting group number two. This is the low voltage alarm. And in this case, uh, we consider low voltage 3.3 volts per cell on a 30S pack that puts us at like basically 99 volts. So we're gonna go in for our low voltage alarm and we're gonna set that to 99 volts. We're gonna go through here and actually set our percentage to turn off the alarm. So let's say you run the car down to 5%, you're gonna get a low battery warning. At what percentage do you want that alarm to turn off? We typically set it for 20%. Once you're charging and you get past 20%, you got enough juice to kind of run around again. So we feel that's a comfortable setting. Moving on, we've got the low battery alarm on delay, uh, the minimum battery alarm time that it's on. This is kind of up to you uh, how, how loudly you want it to scream at you and for how long. Um, you know, usually this is right in front of the driver, so they're, they're pretty aware of where they're at. Uh, so we set those values pretty low. Okay. Moving on to group three. Now group three is a low voltage alarm setting and that's a little different than a low battery setting. When it says low battery, it's talking about state of charge. So it's really calculating how many amp hours we said were in the battery and then we're counting those as they come out. And while it's keeping track, it's gonna determine whether the battery is at a low state or a high state. And that is independent of voltage. We know that you can't look at a voltage and determine the exact state of charge from voltage and so by this, we've got our group three settings where we can set the same alarms that we did in group two, but base them on voltage numbers instead of state of charge numbers. So in this case, our main battery low voltage alarm, we're gonna set that for 99 volts. Uh, the alarm delay, maybe 10 seconds. The uh, alarm relay, now this is important here because when we go low voltage, we typically leave those warnings up to the BMS. So we turn this off, but if you would like your alarm to turn on, when you're at a low voltage state, you can enable the relay internally and have that turn on a light on your dash or use the relay expansion pack to turn on a little buzzer or some other item, some other driver alert to let the driver know that, you're, that not only is your state of charge low, but your actual voltage is gonna to get to the point and you wanna, you know, that could cause damage potentially. So you wanna stop it before it gets to that point. Okay, so while we were editing, we realized we missed a short section here on how to determine which relay the alarm triggers. So I'm gonna go over that real quick before we get back to it. Okay, so here we are in setting 3.5 and the default is off. If we change our selection, we get parentheses with the numeral one inside. That represents the internal relay to be triggered. If we see a number outside the parentheses, this is an external relay in the expansion pack and we can change the relay number corresponding to the terminals on the box. So just to clarify, this relay, we can trigger it when we have a low voltage event or a high voltage event. Typically, we leave the low voltage stuff up to the driver, but when you're charging at night, you're not gonna have somebody watching the car. So we set a high voltage limit, maybe one or two volts above your charging voltage, and then we can use this relay to actually shut down the charger just in case something goes wrong with your charger algorithm and it doesn't shut it off at the proper voltage. Uh, moving into the later part of group three at function 3.3 and forward, it talks about an auxiliary alarm. And since this is a lithium system and we have one pack, we're gonna ignore all of the auxiliary battery and auxiliary alarm section. And we're just gonna jump right ahead to function four. Now function four is the high voltage alarm. And this is, this is really what we typically do as a default setting for these. We like to set this up as a secondary catch for the charger. And if the charger doesn't shut off its predetermined voltage of 126 volts, we want our state of charge meter to have some control over that. So what we do is we set our high voltage alarm for 127 volts. So if it exceeds it by one volt, we run the power to our AVC2, which turns on our charging station at the J1772 plug. And we power that through our state of charge meter. So if our voltage gets too high, our state of charge meter is gonna open up that relay and it's gonna kill power to our charging system, which will shut, shut down the charger. And that gives us just an added uh, level of security in there because you also have the charger monitoring voltage. So now we have two systems making sure that we don't overcharge our battery. 
Okay, and again, we don't have an auxiliary battery, so the latter groups of F4.3 and on, we're just gonna ignore that, and we're gonna jump right ahead to the function group five. So the first one is the capacity, and if you don't know your battery's capacity, you can reach out to the vendor, you can call our tech support line, we can help you calculate the capacity of your battery, because you really gotta get this right. Uh, a fuel gauge isn't gonna work if you don't know how many gallons of fuel the, the gas tank's gonna hold. Same with the battery. We need to know exactly how many amp hours of energy we have in there so we can program it in. So in this case, uh, we have the 200 amp hour Tesla cell. We wanted to give ourselves a 10% safety buffer, so we programmed in 180 amp hours for the size. Moving on to our discharge rate, we're gonna skip that because it's irrelevant. We don't have something called Pucret's effect, so our discharge rate really doesn't matter. So we're gonna skip 5.1, we're gonna skip 5.2 about temperature, we're gonna skip 5.3 for a temperature coefficient. 5.4 is Pucret's effect, and lithium ion batteries aren't really known to suffer from this. This is more of a, a phenomenon that's seen in lead acid batteries. So for the Pucret effect, we're gonna set that to 1.00, which is basically a null value for it. Moving on, our self-discharge rate, we're going to set that to zero. We don't really self-discharge the lithium batteries. And the charge efficiency factor, we're just going to go ahead and set that to 100% because um, we basically get one amp hour in, we get one amp hour out. We don't really lose the amp hours once they go into the battery and once that goes across the shunt. Moving on to function group six. We have our shunt amp rating, which we touched on. We needed to set that first, so we've already done that. And our millivolt rating, most all American shunts are set at 50 millivolts. And then moving on to 6.3, we have our backlight value. I like to set this to automatic. So anytime there's a certain amount of current running through the car, the light will turn on. And what's nice about that is when I get home at night, I'll plug in my car to charge it. And as I'm walking away, I look back to make sure that I see the display light up. And that tells me that now current is going across the shunt, the display lights up, and I know that my charger is working because my battery is actually getting charged and my display lights on. So we set that value to AU for automatic. Okay, so moving on to 6.4, this is the polarity for the internal alarm relay. This is a very important setting because it has to be changed from its default value. And its default value, the connector is normally open inside the relay, and we want to set that to normally closed. What this does by being normally closed is it allows our charger to operate, and when it exceeds the voltage, the alarm turns on, opens up those contacts, and turns our charger off. So by default, that functionality is reversed. So we want to go into setting 6.4, and we really want to make sure that we set that to NC, which stands for normally closed. All right, so after that, we basically have finished out all the important settings. You want to go ahead and now fully charge the vehicle and make sure that it synchronizes at the top. And you will know this by after completing a full charge, the display will actually flash at you full and tell you that it's got a full charge. That's how you know you got it right. And then the second thing that we want you to do is go drive the vehicle and drive it down until your gauge says that you're down near you know, 5%, 3%, 2%. We want to drive that percentage value all the way down to 0%. And while you're doing this, it's very important, we want you to monitor your voltage. At the point that your state of charge meter tells you you cannot drive anymore and you've got 0% capacity left in your battery, we want to make sure that you still have a couple volts of healthy voltage. So in this case, since our low voltage cutoff is right at 99 or 100 volts, we want to go out and drive the car from a full charge from 100%, watch our state of charge meter count down in terms of percentage until it hits 0%. We want to switch back over into the voltage mode and make sure that we still have a healthy amount of voltage in the car, in this case, like 102, 103 volts. Once you complete that, you know that your battery capacity within your state of charge meter is actually synchronized to the exact capacity in your battery, and that way you're gonna have many miles to come, you're not gonna damage your battery, your friends can drive the car and they can read the percentage meter, just like on your iPhone, uh, and it's just gonna tell them exactly how far they can go. They know that not based on voltage, if the display is telling them 50%, that means they've got 50% of the capacity left and they can get back home. So it's really important to get this right. It's really important to, to set it up right away. This is one of the first things you should calibrate because all of your diagnostic stuff from here on out is gonna be voltage-based and current-based, and this is gonna give you both voltage and current from your battery. 
So I hope that wasn't too boring. I hope I didn't ramble on too much, but we really wanted to give something a step-by-step -step guide so people could use it to help set up their TBS Expert Pro. If you have any more questions regarding this, setting it up or any of our other products, please drop us an email at support at evwest.com and good luck with your builds and have fun and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.